Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another live streaming of basic transfer pricing. Tonight, our discussion will focus on uh, the de determination of separate taxable income of its taxable taxpayer in a group. Uh, also, aggregate and specific adjustment for groups taxable income and the discussion of the case of Guidant Limited Liability Company, formerly known as Guidant Corporation and Subsidiaries et al. versus Commissioner of Internal Revenue. And today is June 28, 2021. I would like to say thank you po sa ating mga subscribers. Ilan na yung subscribers natin, Harry? Okay, so 1,097 uh, subscribers na po tayo. And thank you, thank you very much sa atin po mga subscribers. Uh, shout out. Shout out po kay Sir Christian Cry Brian Kakayan. Good evening okay. daw po. At po kay Ma'am Kay Ann Ferrer. Okay. Shout out po. Uh, from ano siya ma'am? Uh, University of Pangasinan. Okay, pumaparticipan natin sila sa transfer pricing, yes. Mm -hmm. And good evening din po kay Ma'am Jonalyn Bon lang. Okay. Sila pa lang po. Okay, so thank you very much and I would like to invite you again for the uh, free webinar on transfer pricing and uh, tax treaties, no, bukas. And then... Um, Free, a free webinar on transfer pricing and international taxation on Wednesday. Uh, so, thank you very much sa mga nag-attend at saka uh, so viewers din po natin ngayon. No? Actually, yung ginagawa natin dito as if we were telling stories about uh, cases no, sa transfer pricing. So, that may idea tayo. Why? Because if we try to look at only on the regulations, hindi po natin makikita ano yung kanyang applications. But with cases, makikita mo yung application ng transfer pricing. Okay. So, ano, ano po ba itong dispute dito sa determination of separate taxable income of its taxable taxpayer in a group? Ito yung sinasabi ko palagi sa inyo. And even if we try to visit also the requirement of Ramo 1-2019 dito po sa atin sa Pilipinas, yun yung sinasabi ko nga na always be ready of the uh, segmented financial statement. No? Kasi sa segmented financial statement, nakalagay na dyan, kung ano yung uh, specific, especially if you prepare uh, consolidated financial statement. Doon sa consolidated financial statements mo na yan, be ready with the segmented financial statements. Meaning the financial statements that it's belong to the uh, group. No? Kung consolidated financial statements naman siya. Kung halimbawa naman yung uh, company mo is um, uh, head office, so, be ready also with the segmented financial statement containing financial statement of its branches. Kung manufacturing companies ka naman, manufacturing thousand or many products, be ready also with the segmentation of your financial statement based on product line no? or line of business. So, yun po yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na be ready. Why? Kasi, in this case, Ang issue dito is uh, nagdi-demand yung uh, guidance uh, company na magkaroon sila ng separate or very specific na adjustment sa transfer pricing. No? Uh, ano naman itong aggregate and specific adjustment for groups taxable income? Ito yung uh, paggumawa na ng uh, assessment or findings. Yung examiner, halimbawa, in this case, the IRS, Internal Revenue Service of U.S., because this is a U.S. case, um, ginawa niya, hindi siya gumawa ng um, specific adjustment per member of the group. No? Ang ginawa niya, consolidated na adjustment. No? So, doon nag nagreklamo yung uh, guidance uh, limited liability company. But, uh, for your information, in this case, the decision here is in favor of the Internal Revenue Service. So, and lahat ng mga contention, allegations ng uh, petitioner, the petitioner here is the guidance, is in, ang decision man is in favor of the 
respondent, which is the Internal Revenue Service or the Commissioner of Internal Revenue of U.S. Okay, so let's start with the case. No? So the case is uh, decided by the United States Tax Court. No? Sa atin yung parang Court of Tax Appeal. Uh, Guidant Limited Liability Company, formerly known as Guidant Corporation and subsidiaries et al., the petitioners, versus the Commissioner of Internal Revenue as the respondent. No? This was um, filed on February 29, 2016. No? Sa U.S., marami na silang cases ng transfer pricing na magaganda. No? So, petitioners are a group of U.S. corporation which filed consolidated federal income tax returns. Yung uh, business nila is yung gumagawa sila ng mga products para sa heart. No? Medical sila, medical. During those years, petitioner, si Guidant, primarily through the group's U.S. subsidiaries, consummated transactions with their foreign affiliates. Marami din siyang affiliates no? all over the world. The transactions included the licensing of intangibles. No? Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, uh, we will focus on also our discussions on intangibles because intangibles are very important topics for transfer pricing. No? So hindi na wawala ang case uh, intangibles. The purchase and sale of manufactured property and services. Kasi hindi lang manufactured product yung uh, binibenta nila, eh, pati services. Why? Kasi about the heart, no? yung uh, mga, mga gadgets, mga products na linalagay sa heart, and then yung mga services na uh, pertaining also to uh, patients with heart problems. Uh, so, respondent relying upon his authority under the Internal Revenue Code, Section 482. Ano yung Section 482? This is the same as Section 50 of our National Internal Revenue Code here in the Philippines, which is, and sabi ko nga, this is the transfer pricing law in the Philippines. Sa U.S., Section 482. No? So, adjusted the reported prices at which items were transferred. So, transfer pricing. No? Uh, yung pricing of goods and services between the related parties. Yun ang in-adjust ni uh, Commissioner of Internal Revenue. So, between... Uh, the petitioner or guidance and their foreign affiliates. So respondent then determine the groups through consolidated taxable income. No, yung CTI na tinatawag. Uh, consolidated taxable income by posting all of the adjustment to the separate taxable in the income of the group's parent. So sa nilagay ni... Uh, Commissioner of Internal Revenue yung kanya adjustment doon kay parent. Kasi di ba si parent consolidated yung financial statement nila with all the subsidiaries. Which increased pro tanto the group CTI or consolidated taxable income and without making any specific adjustments. Wala siyang yung, uh, ginawang specific adjustment to any subsidiaries separate taxable income. Why? Kasi, uh, di ba yung nire-require natin na consolidated financial statements uh, para doon sa mga companies with subsidiaries and with uh, certain limit on their uh, ownership of the subsidiaries. So, ang ginawa ni respondent ni uh, IRS, gumawa siya ng, adjust, ng adjustment. In-increase niya yung uh, consolidated taxable income Pero hindi siya gumawa ng uh, kanino ba yung nagpertain yung adjustment as per subsidiary. No? So, R also did not determine any portion or respondent or si IRS. Did not determine any portion of the adjustment that related solely to intangibles, to intangibles or to services. So in short, this specific yung kanyang findings. No? So, petitioner assert that respondent adjustment are arbitrary, capricious, and unreasonable. Hindi, ayoko magbigay ng opinion, no? But yun ang findings nila, arbitrary, capricious, and unreasonable as a matter of law because R did not determine the true separate taxable income of each controlled taxpayer within the meaning of Section 1.482-1F14. So, income tax regulations and 2, 
or did not make specific adjustment with respect to its transaction involving an intangible a purchase and sale of property or a provision of services. So, sa dami ng kanyang uh, activity, lump sum yung ginawang adjustment. So, dito siya nagre-rekla- nagreklamo kasi hindi, hindi specified kung sinong uh, subsidiary niya at hindi din specified kung anong nature, no? Kung purchase and sale of property ba siya or provision of services. So, anong held dito? Anong decision ng court? Neither IRC Section 482 nor the regulations there under required that are when exercising his authority under Internal Revenue Code Section 482 always determine the true separate taxable income of its controlled taxpayer in a consolidated group contemporaneously with the making of the resulting adjustments. So, in favor, sa respondent, in favor kay Commissioner of Internal Revenue. Another, for the second issue is, IRC Section 482 and the regulations there under allow R or respondent when exercising his authority under IRC Section 482 to aggregate one or more related transactions instead of making specific adjustment with respect to its type of transaction. So very, very specific yung kanilang decision na allowed si Commissioner of Internal Revenue to make aggregate, no? Uh, adjustment, hindi uh, relate, uh, specific, no? Hindi specific adjustment. Okay. So, sino gumawa ng opinion? Si Judge Laro. So, these cases are before the court consolidated for purposes of trial, briefing, and opinion. Petitioners petition the court to redetermine the following federal income tax deficiencies and accuracy related penalty that respondent determined. No? So, Guidant Limited Liability Company, formerly known as Guidant Corporation and Subsidiaries. No? So, itong isang case na to, ang uh, year covered niya is 1997, 2000, 2001, and 2002. So, yung deficiency uh, niya is 4,011,214,000,000 and 220 million. So, sa dami ng kanilang mga subsidiary companies, no? So, Cardiac Pacemakers, Inc., a substitute agent for the Guidance Consolidated Group, docket number 5990-11. So, year 2003, and deficiency naman niya is 73 million. Cardiac Pacemakers, Inc., a successor by merger. No? Dito sa una, substitute agent siya. Tapos sa pangalawa, successor by merger siya. To CPI, Del Caribe Limited. This is another company, no? Pero subs- uh, related party pa rin. Docket number 10985-11, year is 1999. Deficiency is 240 million, no? So footnote, unless otherwise indicated, section references are to the Internal Revenue Code. Applicable to the years at issue and rule references are to the tax court rules of practice and procedure. Yun yung rules of court and procedure ng uh, tax court. Boston Scientific Corporation and Subsidiaries, docket number 26876-11. Malalaman natin mamaya, no? May explanation sila as to kung sino ito mga uh, companies na to, no? And how is their uh, role in the making of business or transactions. So, Boston Scientific Corporation and Subsidiaries, docket number 26876-11 for the year 2006 and 2007. No? Deficiency, 117 million and 36 million. Guidant Limited Liability Company, formerly known as Guidant Corporation and Subsidiaries, docket number 5501-12, year 1995 deficiencies, 4 million. Cardiac Pacemakers, Inc., a substitute agent for Guidant Consolidated Group, docket number 5502-12. Year 2004-2005 and April 21, 2006. No? Ang laki. Uh, deficiency niya is 107 million, 16 million, and 453 million deficiency. At meron pa siyang accuracy-related penalty na 41 million. Okay. So, yun po yung assessment or adjustment sa kanya ng IRC for the transfer pricing. 
So the, the deficiencies and accuracy related penalty flow from respondents transfer pricing adjustment under section 482 that increased the income of guidance corporation and its US subsidiary sometimes collectively guidance group by approximately 3.5 billion. No, ganun kalaki yung kanilang sales kasi ang minamanufacture nila yung mga pacemaker, yung pang heart, no? Very sophisticated po yung kanilang products. The guidance group filed consolidated federal income tax returns and respondents adjustment stem from transactions that the guidance group engaged in with the group's affiliated foreign entities. Respondent determined for purposes of ascertaining the guidance group's consolidated taxable income, CTI, no? CTI is consolidated taxable income, that all of the adjusted income was the separate taxable income, STI. No? CTI consolidated, STI separate taxable income. No? of guidance corporation. Respondent did not determine that any of the adjusted income was the STI of one or more of the guidance group's U.S. subsidiaries. Respondent also did not determine the specific amount of the adjustments that related to tangibles, to intangibles or to services. No? So para, para kay uh, guidance group, parang lump sum, no? parang buo yung ginawa na adjustment. At hindi rin nila alam kung tangible ba na yan, intangibles or to services ba na klase ng uh, adjustment. Petitioners move for partial summary judgment asserting that respondents' adjustments are arbitrary, capricious, and unreasonable as a matter of law. Kasi kung mapansin natin, dito sa Pilipinas, pag gumawa tayo ng assessment, it should be based on facts and law. No? Dapat may legal basis. But in this case, may legal basis naman si IRS, IRS at ano yung legal basis niya, yung section 482 ng transfer pricing. No? Such is so, petitioner, petitioners argue because, number one, respondent did not determine the true separate taxable income. So gusto nila ipasigmentize yung uh, adjustment of its Controlled taxpayer in the guidance group as required by section 1.482-1F14 income tax regulations and two respondent did not make specific adjustments with respect to its transaction involving an intangible a purchase and sale of property or a provision of services. Petitioners filed a memorandum in support of their motion and set forth their factual and legal positions in the memorandum. Respondent filed an objection to petitioner's motion and filed a memorandum as later amended, setting forth his positions as to the motion. Petitioners filed a reply as later amended to respondent's objection. The parties argued the respective positions at a hearing held in New York, New York. We now decide whether to grant the motion. No? So we will deny it. You know, some in judge. We hold as to petitioner's former argument that neither Section 482 nor the regulations thereunder require that the commissioner, when exercising his authority under Section 482, always determine the true separate taxable income of controlled taxpayer in a consolidated group contemporaneously with the making of the resulting adjustments. We hold as to petitioner's later argument that Section 482 and the regulations thereunder allow the commissioner, when exercising his authority under Section 482, to aggregate one or more related transactions concerning an intangible, a purchase and sale of tangible property or a provision of services instead of making specific adjustments with respect to its type of transactions. So you can see now how powerful is Section 482, which I told you, same with Section 50 of the National Internal Revenue Code. If you try to look or analyze the wordings of Section 50, yung power of the commissioners to, to allocate income and deductions, very powerful yan. At wala siyang sinasabi dyan na violations kagaya nitong ginawa ng guidance, no? the questions the authority of the commissioner to make adjustment under Section 482. No? So very powerful statement. At saan nag-ugat yan? On the arms and principle of transfer pricing sa Section, uh, Paragraph 1, Section 9 of 
the model OECD convention at ano sabi doon, where transactions between related parties in their financial and uh, commercial relations which differ from those which would be made between uh, independent enterprises, then any profits which pertain to one of the uh, parties but by reason of those conditions have not so accrued may be included in the profit of that enterprise or that entity and taxed accordingly. So very powerful po yan na statement. Kaya yung contention dito ng uh, guidance, hindi siya pinagbiyan ng 40, no? At saka ang naalala ko pa na sinabi sa amin ng OECD, uh, in case no, you, you are uh, doing a transfer pricing study or transfer pricing analysis and then there are no comparables, then it doesn't mean that since there are no comparables, there is no transfer pricing. You can always hypothesize. So in that word alone, hypothesize, then wala siyang, ano, wala siyang format na talagang dapat mong sundin, no? Because you may even hypothesize. At um, ano pa ang sabi in addition to that? Transfer pricing is not an exact science. It just requires a lot of common sense. So, background of the case. So, we have derived the recitations listed in this background section primarily from the undisputed portion of its party statement. No? Pakinggan natin ito kasi yung case. Ang kagandahan ng case kasi, hindi mo makita sa decision. Saan mo makita? Sa deliberation. No? While uh, they are presenting, uh, while they are arguing and they are presenting uh, their side of the case. Doon mo makita, doon mo appreciate yung beauty ng isang kaso. No? Hindi yung iba na, ay, decision na lang, tapos yun na lang naisip. Eh, pagdating na sa, halimbawa, pa-explain sa iyo yung decision, hindi mo rin kayang i-explain. Why? Kasi decision lang yung alam mo, hindi mo alam anong nangyari. No? So, from the undisputed portion of its party statement of the facts as drawn from the pleadings and other acceptable materials, we also have derived some of the recitations from the disputed portion of its party statement of the facts as viewed in a manner most favorable to respondent, the party opposing petitioner's motion for partial summary judgment. We set forth all recitations solely for purposes of deciding petitioner's motion and not as finding of fact. Kasi sa lower court yung finding of fact. Pagdating na dito sa, sa appeal, wala na yung finding of fact, no? Okay. Santran Corporation versus Commissioner. Yun yung, yun yung decision o no? yung jurisprudence na sinight dito sa case na to. So, guidance group. No? Ito yung background ng guidance group ha. Dito nyo makita, dito nyo ma-appreciate how the group construct a very complicated structure. No? Bakit? An anong ginagawa? Bakit you have to build a very complicated structure? Anong sabi sa transfer pricing? To manage taxes. To save taxes. No? So, Guidant Corporation is a U.S. corporation. No? Siya yung parent company. That from 2001 through 2006 was the parent of an affiliated group that included its U.S. subsidiaries. Carjack Pacemakers, Inc. So, sino yung subsidiaries ni Guidant? Si Carjack Pacemakers, Inc. Si Cardio Thoracic Systems, Inc. Or CTS, no? Si Carjack Pacemakers, Inc. Siya yung CPI. Si Cardio Thoracic Systems, Inc. Siya yung CTS. Guidant Sales Corporation, siya yung GSC. Advanced Cardiovascular Systems, Inc. Siya yung ACS. And Endovascular Technologies Inc. AVT, no? So, siya yung, uh, sila yung mga affiliated group ni Guidant. Boston Scientific Corporation, BSC, ibang company naman to, acquired Guidant Corporation on April 21, 2006. Kung mapapansin ninyo, yung adjustment ng 2006 na April 21, napakalaki. Bakit? Kasi dito tinransfer yung mga intangibles ni uh, Guidant Corp papunta kay Boston Scientific Corporation kasi binili sila, no? Binili ni Boston si Guidant Corporation noong 2006, no? 
So guided corporation and each of its U.S. subsidiaries were there under separate members of the affiliated group of which BSC was the parent. Kasi binenta na si Guidant, si Guidant yung parent. So iba na yung parent. Guidant Corporation remained the parent of its remaining subsidiaries for which it had been the parent before BSC acquired Guidant Corporation. Binili na si Guidant, pero parent company pa rin siya nung ibang corporation na hindi nabili ni Guidant. No? Pero kung ganun ang structure, ano si BSC? No mga subsidiary ni Guidant, ultimate parent. Kasi si, si Guidant yung parent, ultimate parent niya si, si BEC. Kasi si BEC naman yung parent ni Guidant. No? So, ganun ka complicated po yung structure. Guidant Corporation and its U.S. Uh, foreign business entities collectively subsidiaries developed, manufactured, and sold medical devices. Guidant Corporation and its subsidiaries conducted business throughout the developed world. No? Biro mo yan, no? worldwide. Ganun kalalaki yung mga multinational uh, corporations. At ganun sila kayaman. At ganun sila ka-high tech. That's why sila ang architect of change. Architect of the world. No? Kasi sila yung may pera. Sila yung gumagawa ng mga research and development. No? Kaya malaki din yung tulong nila sa humanities. So, subsidiaries. For its subject year, Guidant Corporation's first tier U.S. subsidiaries included CPI and CTS. Sino si CPI? Siya si Cardiac Pacemakers, Inc. CTS, Cardiothoracic Systems, Inc. And Guidant Corporation's second tier. U.S. subsidiaries included GSC. No? Sino si GSC? Si Guidant Sales Corporation. No? So, from 2001 through 2006, Guidant Corporation's first tier U.S. subsidiaries also included ACS and EVT. No, yan yung mga subsidiaries niya. So, Guidant Corporation first, second, and third tier foreign subsidiaries included two Netherlands corporations. So, Guidant BV, renamed Guidant Group BV in 2003, and Guidant Puerto Rico BV, and one Luxembourg Corporation, Guidant Luxembourg SAR. Guidant Puerto Rico BV and Guidant Luxembourg SAR were subsidiaries of Guidant BV. So, ganun sila ka. Parang sanga-sanga yung kanila mga related parties. Guidant Luxembourg SAR owned and operated a manufacturing facility through a branch, Guidant Ireland, no? established in Ireland. Guidant Puerto Rico BV owned and operated a manufacturing facility through a branch, Guidant Puerto Rico established in Puerto Rico. Guidant Corp provided administrative services to Guidant Ireland and to Guidant Puerto Rico. Guidant Group Business Units. Ito naman yung business units ng Guidant. Uh, the Guidant Group consisted of various business units operated by separate corporations. From 2001 through April 21, 2006, these business units were cardiac rhythm management, CRM. Endovascular Solutions, AS, Vascular Intervention, VI, and Cardiac Surgery, CS. So itong cardiac surgery, ano to? Services, no? Kasi surgery eh. Vascular Intervention, no? Endovascular Solutions, Cardiac Rhythm Management, mga services ito. On April 21, 2006, the Guidant Group sold its uh, VI and ES business units. Thereafter, the Guidant Group consisted of the CRM and the CS business units. Alam nyo, pag sundan nyo yung movement nila, mahihilo ka eh. No? Letter B, CRM. CRM devices included pulse generators, pages, pacemakers, implantable cardiac D5 relators, and cardiac resynchronization devices. And leads. No? Very advanced yung kanilang uh, mga products. No? C CPI operated the CRM business unit during all subject years. ES. ES devices included an aortic vascular prosthesis. No? So, devices na to. So, uh, property. And cure. That could be delivered via, via balloon catheter to treat aortic aneurysms. No? So, very advanced yung kanilang technology. EVT operated the ES business unit from 2001 through part of 2003. Guidant Endovascular Solutions, Inc. 
a U.S. corporation assumed EVT's operations on January 1, 2004. GS did not participate in any of the control transactions at issue. VI. VI devices included balloon catheters used in angioplasty procedures, coronary stents and their delivery systems, and guide wires used to direct balloon catheters and stent delivery systems to the area of treatment. Yun yung sa mga heart surgery. ACS operated the VI business unit during 2001 through 2006. No? Kaya alam nyo, mas, masaya ako pag binasa ko yung anong nangyari at saka paano naging interrelated at saka pa paano naging complicated yung uh, structure or yung organizations nila. CS. CS devices included devices used to harvest femoral arteries from a patient for use in coronary artery bypass, grafting surgery, vasovue. Pero mo yung na-harvest mo yung mga arteries at ilagay mo dun sa coronary artery. No? Ginagraft pala yun. Off-pump coronary artery bypass. No? Mga heart bypass. Off-pump coronary artery bypass or off-cub systems and cardiac ablation devices. No? So, sobrang high-tech na talaga sila. At saka specialized. CTS operated the CS business unit during all subject years. Devices that Guidant Ireland or Guidant Puerto Rico manufactured. O, ito na. Ito na ang mga uh, devices or yung mga gadgets na minamanufactured nila. Yung mga ginagamit sa heart. No? Guidant Ireland. Guidant Ireland manufactured PGs during all subject years. Its PG contained a hybrid, which is an electric circuit board to which integrated circuits and other electronic components are bonded. No? Before 2004, Guidant Ireland purchased from CPI all of the hybrids that were incorporated into the PGs it manufactured. Guidant Ireland began manufacturing hybrids in 2004. From 2004 through 2007, Guidant Ireland manufactured PGs using both hybrids it manufactured and hybrids purchased from CPI. From 2001 until the Guidant Group sold the VI business, Guidant Ireland manufactured VI coronary strengths and coronary stent delivery systems. From 2005 until that sales date, Guidant Ireland also manufactured VI standalone balloon catheters for use in angioplasty procedures. No? So, ganyan ka sophisticated yung kanila mga product. No? Guidant Puerto Rico. So, si Guidant Puerto Rico naman manufactured CRM or cardiac rhythm management leads and CS, cardiac surgery vasovio devices during all subject years. During 2002 and part of 2003, Guidant Puerto Rico also manufactured ES, yung endovascular solutions, uncure devices. From 2002 until the Guidant Group sold its VI business, Guidant Puerto Rico also manufactured VI guide wires. From 2004 through the end of the subject years, Guidant Puerto Rico also manufactured CS cardiac ablation devices. During 2007, Guidant Puerto Rico also manufactured CS off-cab systems or off-pump coronary artery bypass, no? So, pump bypass sa heart. Sales of devices. So, ito pa paano nila binibenta, no? So, GSC was the Guidant Group's U.S. marketing and sales affiliate, no? Ito na si Guidant Sales Corporation. GSC sold and distributed to end users in the U.S. devices that Guidant Ireland or Guidant Puerto Rico manufactured. Foreign Guidant Corporation distribution subsidiaries, Guidant Foreign Sales affiliates, sold in many countries outside of the U.S. devices that Guidant Corporation and subsidiaries manufactured. In a foreign market with a Guidant Foreign Sales affiliate, that affiliate sold and distributed to end users in its market devices that Guidant Ireland or Guidant Puerto Rico manufactured. In foreign markets without a Guidant foreign sales affiliate, independent third party foreign distributors sold and distributed to end users devices that Guidant Corporation and subsidiaries manufactured. 
Controlled transactions related to devices that Guidant Ireland or Guidant Puerto Rico manufactured. No? So ito na yung tinatawag na controlled transactions. Ito yung related party transactions, how they were controlled. No? So Guidant Ireland CRM devices, CPI owned intangible property related to CRM pages and hybrids that it licensed to Guidant Ireland in exchange for royalties. So dito na pumasok yung issues on intangible. Kasi sino ba yung may-ari ng... Uh, parang knowledge and process, know-how sa pag-manufacture ng product. No? So, nilicense niya kay Guidant Ireland. No? Sino yung may-ari? Si CPI. CPI manufactured and sold CRM hybrids to Guidant Ireland. Guidant Ireland sold finished CRM devices to GSC and to CPI. CPI sold the Guidant Ireland CRM devices it Ikot-ikot yung kanilang uh, transaksyon, no? Si CPI ay nagmamanufacture, binenta kay CRM. Si CRM naman, binenta naman kay CPI, no? Ikot-ikot. CPI resold the Guidant Ireland CRM devices it purchased to independent third-party foreign distributors. Guidant Ireland also sold finished CRM devices direct, directly to Guidant Foreign Sales Affiliated and to independent third-party foreign distributors. Ito naman si Guidant uh, Puerto Rico, CRM Devices. Si CPI owned intangible property related to CRM leads that it licensed to Guidant Puerto Rico in exchange for royalties. Ganon din yung ginawa niya doon kay Guidant Ireland. No? So si CPI talaga ang mayari na intangible property. Guidant Puerto Rico sold CRM leads it manufactured to GSC and to CPI. O, si ano yung may-ari ng intangibles niya, ma, nag-manufacture si Puerto Rico and then binenta na sa kanya yung manufactured na. No? CPI resold the Guidant Puerto Rico leads it purchased to the Guidant Foreign Sales. No? So, yung sales na isa na yan, umiikot-ikot, ibenta sa kanya pabalik, tapos ibenta na naman niya sa mga affiliates, tapos ibenta sa iba. No? So, umiikot-ikot sa kanila yung uh, transactions. Guidant Puerto Rico also sold CRM leads it manufactured to Guidant Ireland. Oh, so, Guidant Ireland resold the Guidant Puerto Rico leads it purchased to the Guidant foreign sales of affiliates and to the independent third-party foreign distributors. So, Guidant Ireland, uh, VI devices, you can just imagine, no, kung yung gagawa na examiner, gagawa niya to ng specific na adjustment, nako, sa dami ng inikutan ng product, sa dami ng mga uh, sanga-sanga ng mga transactions, oh, kaya gawin kung sa kaya, no, para sa akin, kaya kung sa kaya, but uh, parang sinadya din kasi siya na ginulo, no. So, Guidant Ireland uh, VI devices, ACS owned intangible property related to VI stents, stent delivery systems, and angioplasty balloons catheters that it licensed to Guidant Ireland. So, Guidant Ireland paid ACS royalties in exchange for that license. So, before Guidant Ireland gained VI product sterilization capabilities in 2004, Guidant Ireland sold all of the VI devices it manufactured to ACS. No? ACS sterilized the Guidant Ireland VI devices it purchased in return for a sterilization fee. So sila sila mismo may mga services din sila na between them. No? ACS resold the Guidant Ireland VI devices it purchased and sterilized to GSC to the Guidant Foreign Sales Affiliates and to the independent third-party foreign distributors. After Guidant Ireland gained VI product sterilization capabilities in 2004, Guidant Ireland selling its VI devices intended for the U.S. market to ACS. ACS continued to resell these devices to GSC. Yung stages ng product, ilang beses yan pa transfer, transfer between related companies bago mapunta sa uh, third-party customers, no? So after Guidant Ireland gained VI product sterilization capabilities in 2004, 
Guidant Ireland also sold its VI devices intended for foreign markets to the Guidant Foreign Sales Affiliates and to the independent third-party foreign distributors. D. Guidant Puerto Rico VI devices. So ito naman si Puerto Rico. ACS owned intangible property related to VI guide wires that it licensed to Guidant Puerto Rico. Guidant Puerto Rico paid ACS royalties in exchange for that license. So iba naman to na intangible, no? Sa guide wire naman to. So kay ACS to, yung kanina, iba namang uh, intangible yon, no? So Guidant Puerto Rico sold all of the VI Devices manufactured to ACS. ACS sterilized the Guidant Puerto Rico VI devices it purchased in return for a sterilization fee. ACS resold the Guidant Puerto Rico VI devices it purchased to GSC to the Guidant Foreign Sales Affiliates and to the independent third party foreign distributors. No? Ito naman si Guidant Puerto Rico ES devices. Ito yung endovascular technologies. Sino naman ang may-ari ng uh, intangible nito? Si EVT naman, no? So, bawat isang klaseng intangibles, iba-iba yung may-ari na company. So, EVT owned, pero related parties pa rin sila. EVT owned intangible property related to ES uncured devices that it licensed to Guidant Puerto Rico. No? So, kung mapapansin niyo si Guidant Puerto Rico, ang dami niyang mga royalty payments paid to different related parties. No? So, Guidant Puerto Rico paid EVT royalties in exchange for that license. Guidant Puerto Rico sold all of the ES devices it manufactures to EVT. No? So, nagbabay siya na royalty kay EVT, tapos lahat pa ng kanyang mga product, binibenta din kay EVT. So, umiikot lang yung transaction sa kanila. EVT resolve the Guidant Puerto Rico ES devices it purchased to GSC to the Guidant Foreign Sales Affiliates and to the independent third party foreign distributors. So, same sa ibang product. No? Ganun din na nangyayari. Guidant Puerto Rico CS devices. Ito naman, CS devices, iba naman to, no? Sino naman may-ari nito? Si CTS naman. CTS own intangible property related to CS Vasovio devices. Opcap systems and cardiac ablation devices that it licensed to Guidant Puerto Rico. So, iba naman to ng klase ng product, ibang royalty payment naman to. At ibang company owner naman ang intangible, no? So, Guidant Puerto Rico paid CTS royalties in exchange for that license. So, imagine na nga ilang royalty payments na yung binabayaran ni Guidant Puerto Rico. So, Guidant Puerto Rico sold all of the CS devices it manufactured to CTS. So, you can just imagine na yung may-ari ng uh, intangibles, lahat ng manufactured ni Puerto Rico, doon din niya binibenta no? sa may-ari ng intangible. So, you can just imagine yung pricing. No? Kaya nga dito sila inaudit ng IRS because of the pricing. No? Kasi ang transaction sa kanila lang umiikot. CTS resolve the Guidant Puerto Rico CS devices it purchased to GSC, to the Guidant Foreign Sales Affiliates, and to the independent third-party foreign distributors. So, same um, system, no? Or same uh, arrangement, no? Audit. Ito na, na-audit na sila. So, ganun yung kanilang uh, sistema o yung kanilang operation. Kaya ako... When I was still doing the audit, no, I, I really love doing operations audit. No? Kasi during the operations audit, sa manufacturing pala, makita mo na paano umiikot or paano nangyayari yung operations. No? So audit, respondent audited a consolidated federal income tax returns that the guidance group filed for 2001 through April 21, 2006. Bakit? Kasi yung April 21, 2006, ito yung time na binenta na si Gaidan pa pumunta na kay BSC. No? So, anong ibig sabihin nun? All the intangibles na benta. And the consolidated federal income tax returns that BSC and its US subsidiaries, BSC Group filed for 2006 and 2007. So, anong ginawa ni uh, Commissioner of Internal Revenue? Lahat ay sinabject niya sa isang audit, no? Sabay-sabay. Kaya nga, may ginawa din na 
uh, ganyang initiative ang BIR noon, yung tinatawag nila conglomerate audit. Halimbawa, 40 group of companies kayo, minsanan lang kayong i-audit, no? So, during the audits, respondent considered as to the years ended on or before April 21, 2006, whether income was allocated properly between the guidance group. So, yun na, whether allocated ba ang income between guidance group and their foreign affiliates. And as to 2006 and 2007, whether income was allocated properly between the BSC group and their foreign affiliates. Respondent considered whether the transfer of intangible, ito yung transfer kay BSC, ha? the sale of components and finished goods and the provision of services with respect to certain products collectively, transactions at issue were made at arm's length. No? Kaya nga sa mga free webinars po natin, uh, since day one ng ating free webinar, nandiyan naka-anchor talaga ang transfer pricing. Why? Because we are... Um, studying the attached topic in relation to transfer pricing. Kaya tingnan mo, lahat ano mga ginagawa nila dito, collectively, individually, or ano man yung mga ginagawa nila, mga financial and commercial transactions, it always read down to their compliance to the arm's length principle. No? Kaya anong sabi dito? Uh, with respect to certain products, collectively, transactions at issue were made at arm's length. Kasi pag hindi arm's length yan, then makakaroon ng adjustment. Kaya we already have our, our webinar on uh, comparability analysis and adjustment. So ano yung pinaka matindi sa transfer pricing audit? Yung paggawa na ng adjustment. Why? Kasi yung adjustment it is already the result of comparability analysis. And ang kasunod niya, deficiency na, magbabahid ka na. Kasi adjustment yan eh. So, ito yung kine-question nila dito. Bakit na yung adjustment na ginawa is consolidated, hindi separate. No? For each subject year, the transactions at issue involve Guidance Corporation, CPI, CTS, and GSC. No? So, ito yung related parties. The transactions at issue also involve ACS for 2001 through April 2006 and EVT for 2001 through 2003. Ito yung pinakita natin na summary kanina. Ano-anong mga, mga companies yun, anong year na mayroon silang assessment na uh, adjustment or deficiency income. So to evaluate whether income was allocated at arm's length between the guidance group and their foreign affiliates, may shout out Bahari. Hindi mo sinabi, tuloy-tuloy tayo. Sige, shoutout muna. Shoutout muna sa mga viewers natin. Sige. Shoutout ma'am kay Sir J.M. Nieto. Good evening daw po ma'am. Okay. Pati po kay Miss J. Good evening daw po. Okay. Pati po kay Ma'am Chuchi Subarjaga. Okay. Good evening daw po sa lahat. Kay Ma'am Mary Jane Doroy. Good okay. evening daw po. Oh, mga participants natin sila sa ano eh. Siya pala si Iwanang Masikap. Oh, ang galing. Si Ma'am Mary Jane. Oo, oh, gusto ko yun. Gusto ko yung ano mo, nickname mo. Sige. Then kay Sir Jesse Villanueva Zamora. Okay. Good evening daw po. Good evening din daw po kay Sir Jericho Ferrer. Okay. Oo, oh, yung mga ano natin yan, participants. Thank Ako. you very much ha, for watching. Sige. Ito kay Ma'am L.B. Galanido. Wow, tabuhol, no? Alam mo, Ma'am L.B., pag wala nang ano, o kaya pag nabaksin na ako, talagang papasyalan kita sa buhol. No? May pinsan ako dyan sa panglaw, eh. Papasyalan talaga kita dyan kasi uh, minsan pala ako nakapunta ng buhol. Ah, dalawa. Dalawang beses pala. Sige, next. Shoutout din po ma'am kay Sir Eugene Cruz. Oo. Oh, Na-vaccine na, na siya. No? First Kanina. dose. No? Panina. <laughs> okay. And then kay Ma'am Lilian Yao. Good evening daw po sa lahat. Ah, si Ma'am Lilian always. Thank you Ma'am Lilian. Sila pa lang ma'am. Okay. So thank you very much for watching. Ah. At least na, ano, na, na ninyo yung ating basic transfer pricing na, na channel. No? Kasi... Isama ko lang sana to sa tax training. Ang problema, <clears throat> napakaraming topics ng uh, basic transfer pricing. Pag isinama natin doon sa tax training, parang maiiwan yung transfer pricing kasi ang mga um, uh, viewers doon, iba yung ano nila eh, iba yung nasa mind nila eh. 
Kaya nga, binukod ko talaga yung transfer pricing para mas nakatutok tayo specifically dahil napakaganda ng mga topics po dito sa transfer pricing. No? Alam nyo, uh, dito lang parang lumawak yung uh, understanding ko in taxation because of this transfer pricing. No? Okay, so thank you very much. Ilan yung viewers natin? 11. Okay, so thank you very much po sa ating mga viewers. Thank you very much for watching. And bukas, our free webinar is about transfer pricing and tax treaties. No? I-discuss natin sa inyo the tax treaties, yung Vienna Convention, at saka yung doctrine ng Pacta Servanda, yung respect doon sa agreement. No? And then we will discuss also yung uh, Model Tax Convention on uh, Income and Capital. Yan yung uh, pinagmulan ng tax treaties natin, yung OECD. And also, pahapyaw lang, kasi ang haba ng topic, hindi kaya ng dalawang oras. Pahapyaw lang yung sa... US RP tax treaty no and then siguro kasi meron naman tayong uh, video on how to avail of the tax treaty benefits ang problema lang may bago na yung 14 days 2021 may bago na na uh, guidelines ulit para sa how to avail of the tax treaty siguro magkakaroon pa tayo ulit ng video separately no kasi mahaba hindi natin pwedeng isama dun sa discussion natin bukas. No? Although pa happy, sasabihin ko sa inyo na out of the tax treaty between the countries, talaga you have to consult the tax treaty pagka may mga transactions yung citizen mo with that other country. Why? Because you avail of the lower tax rates. No? Okay, so let's continue with the uh, discussion po natin sa case. No? Kasi maganda itong case na to, no? So, to evaluate whether income was allocated at arm's length between the guidance group and their foreign affiliates, respondent, ito yung ginawa ng IRS, no? Nung ginawa ng IRS, considered petitioners transfer pricing studies. Yan ang sinasabi ko na sa inyo, na once na gumawa na kayo ng transfer pricing study, ito yung transfer pricing report, ha? Ito yung transfer pricing analysis. That's why yung iba, ma'am, hindi naman kami mandatory doon sa 1709 form. Gagawa pa ba kami ng uh, transfer pricing analysis? Yes na yes. Why? Because during the transfer pricing, ulit hahanapin sa inyo yan. No? Ang tawag dyan, transfer pricing studies, transfer pricing report, transfer pricing analysis. No? So, anong ginawa ni respondent o ni IRS? No? The commissioner, during the audit, tinignan niya yung transfer pricing studies. No? As well as financial data and other information made available by petitioners and that was publicly available. Publicly available pala sa kanila yung transfer pricing study samantalang sa atin, hindi ba? 1709 lang yung attachment ng ITR. Tapos, kailan lang pwede i-demand yung transfer pricing study? During the audit lang, kaya hindi siya publicly available. No? Pero sa US, publicly available. In connection with the audit for 2006 and 2007, respondent also considered the methodologies and approaches taken with respect to the audit for 2001 through April 2006 examination cycles. Respondent concluded that income was not allocated at arm's length. Yan, yan na ha. Kasi nakikita na kaagad na hindi arm's length. Tingnan nyo na lang kung paano tumakbo yung manufactured products, owner of the intangible, tapos kanino na punta yung uh, lahat ng minamanufacture na products ng manufacturing company. Kasi, sabi sa amin ng OECD, ito na yung titingnan nyo kaagad yung terms of trade. If the supplier is the same with the buyer, siya yung supplier, siya din yung buyer, yan, question mark ka na kaagad dyan. No? So, anong nangyari sa kanila? Sino yung supplier na intangible product? Binabayaran siya ng royalties ng manufacturer. Tapos siya din ang buyer ng lahat ng manufactured product. No? So, terms of trade. Respondent concluded that income was not allocated at arm's length between the guidance group and their foreign affiliates and adjusted guidance corporations STI, no? specific taxable income for its subject year, to effect a pro-tanto adjustment to the group's CTI, no? Consolidated Tax Income for those years. 
Respondent did not compute specific adjustment for its control taxpayer included in the group or the member-specific adjustment. The IRS practice is to compute member-specific adjustment when the taxpayer and the audit team can agree on such adjustment or when the audit team has sufficient information to make them. You have sufficient information to make them. Ikaw walang segmented financial statement. Hindi mo magawa yung adjustment, no? So the IRS practice is to defer making member-specific adjustment in other circumstances until a final resolution has been reached. No? Because this determination often involves complex calculations, you can just imagine, sa dami-dami ng mga related parties. No? As well as extensive and collaborative discussion with the taxpayer. Bakit extensive and collaborative discussions? Kasi may source document dyan. Halimbawa, nasa sales na lang. Halimbawa, dun sa mga valuation ng mga intangibles na yan, the payment of royalties, isa-isahin mo talaga yan, no? Sa bagay dyan ko, ano naman yung sarili ko pagdating sa audit, gustong-gusto ko yun. <laughs> yung halimbawa, per account, per document, no? Na iniisa-isa ko. Kasi yung, yung unang asaba ko sa audit, sa office audit pa lang ako, binigyan na ako ng kahon-kahon na mga ano, supermarket, no? Kahon-kahon na mga... Uh, resibo, no? So, dinala sa opisina, tinatawanan ako ng mga office mate ko. Eh, bakit dinadalan ka ng mga ganyan karami mga resibo? Sabi ko, nangihingi ako, no? Pupunta ko sa, sa taxpayer, deliver ko yung letter of authority, nangihingi ako ng resibo. So, sabi nila, bakit ka binibigyan ng ganyan? Kasi sila daw hindi binibigyan. Eh, hindi ko alam. Kasi sabi ko, nangihingi ako, eh, yan naman yung sa letter of authority ko. So, binibigyan nila ako. So, what I did, isa-isa ko yung resibo. Since ano siya, yung supermarket, so may mga kamatis, may mga, uh, ano ba yun, sibuyas, bawang, kasi yung supermarket nga eh. Pero nandun naman, dokumento naman lahat. So, ang dami. Isa-isa ko yun. So, yung mga violations sa resibo, ano, in short, talaga inaudit ko yung kahon-kahon niya na, ano, na, uh, resibo, ano, mga records. But, sad to say, no? Yun, yun yung mga heartaches ko din sa mayayari. Sad to say, hindi ko pa natapos yung tatlong kahod. So, nagpa-follow up yung taxpayer. Ano yung findings? Ano, nagpapa-update? So, sinabi ko sa kanya, ito na yung findings ko so far, pero hindi pa tapos. Ano? Siguro yung findings ko sa mga penalties pa lang, no? Sa mga violations sa receipts. Mga 500,000 pa lang. Alam mo, pumunta na sila sa direktor at nakiusap. So, ano naman ang ginawa? Hindi pinatapos sa akin yung audit, hindi pinatuloy. My God. Yun yung mga heartaches ko sa BIR. And then, isa pa, yung isang heartaches ko, binigyan ako ng letter authority, no? Pinapunta ako sa, ay yung hindi naman pinapunta, nag-deliver talaga ako kasi nandun yung address ng, ano eh, ng fish pond eh. Fish pan yung inaudit ko eh, no? So, nandun sa gitna ng asyenda, ang layo, no? Walang sasakyan na maayos papunta doon. Nag-commute lang ako. Yung unang sakay ko, jeep, no? Pangalawang sakay mo, tricycle. Pangatlong sakay mo, since magkukross ka sa, ano, sa ilog na malaki, bangka, no? Tapos nilakad ko na lang yung, ano, All by myself, ha? wala akong kasama, kaya tinatakot nila ako, bakit daw naglalakad ako, ako lang mag-isa. Ang sagot ko naman, sabi ko, bakit bawal ba maglakad mag-isa? No? So, punta ako doon. Napakalawak na fish pan. Sophisticated. Ang lakal mo mula gate hanggang doon sa opisina niya. Laki, lahat-lahat na. In short, diniliver ko pa lang yung LA. Tapos, yun, mahilig ako mag-operations audit. So, ikot-ikot na ako doon sa, sa fish pan. Tiningnan ko na gaano kalaki. Tiningnan ko yung mga feeds. Kasi pag nag-audit ako, para akong nagtithesis. No? Tinitingnan ko saan siya kumukuha. Anong ginagawa sa isda. Ano yung mga aging. Paano yung mag-feeds. Tala lahat yan. No? Kaya tuwang-tuwa ako na pag nag-audit ako. Kasi at the same time, inaaral ko yung industry. Kaya ako na love ang transfer pricing. Because this is an industry audit. No? So, yung ginawa ko, ikot-ikot na ako doon sa fish pond, no? Tinignan ko na yung mga isda, ano? Tapos, paano yung mga 
uh, nasaan yung mga fins nila, lahat-lahat. Tapos, kikita ko doon sa mga bulletin board nila yung mga instructions, no? Tsaka yung mga aging, nandun na lahat. Yan talaga, inaaral ko lahat yan. So, ito, okay na. Sa hapon, nauwi na ako. Pag-uwi, wala na masakyan, no? So, sakay pa rin ako ng bangka. Wala na masakyan, puno na yung mga jeep. Uh, sabit ako sa likod ng jeep, nakatayo, no? So, yun ang mga naranasan ko sa probinsya na audit. Pero, mas okay pa yung ano experience ko kaysa dun sa experience nung iba, no? Na pagdating nila mag-audit sila sa, sa probinsya na liblib na liblib na, wala silang makainan. Pagdating doon sa maraming tao, punta na sila, nakikain sila, yun pala may patay. Yun yung experience mo pag pumunta ka sa iba't ibang lugar, no? So, in short, tapos na na, na na deliver ko na yung letter authority. So, ano pa yung sunod ko na hard X doon? Kinabukasan, doon na, gagawa na ako ng a preliminary audit ko sa, ano, tingnan ko na yung FS, no? Kasi ganun ang ginagawa ko eh. Gagawin mo na yung FS, uh, titingnan mo na yung sales, i-relate mo dito sa balance sheet niya, tapos titingnan ko yung notes to financial statement. In short, table audit ka na doon sa FS, no? Habang naghihintay ka ng documents. Kinabukasan, tapos ko nang mag, uh, receive, pa-receive pala ng LA, ha? Kinabukasan, tinawag na ako ng director. Namatay na yung director. Binawi yung LA ko. No? So, yun. Ang dami kong heart aches actually na naranasan. Pero sabi ko, that's part of life. No? Sabi nga nung professor ko sa law, we have to accept that in our lives now, uh, uh, life is unfair. <laughs> no? Sabi ko, hindi naman lahat. No? Hindi naman lahat. Life is not all unfair. Part lang siguro talaga ng life na may fair at sa kamay unfair. Pero hindi naman lahat, no? Uh, so, yun ang ano ko, yun ang mga hard aches ko sa, during the audit. Pero hindi naman lahat unfair, no? Kasi meron namang iba na cooperative din na taxpayer, no? At saka yung iba, tuturo ang kapa, no? Okay. So, because the parties did not reach a resolution of the Section 482 issue... Uh, anong sabi natin dito sa Section 482 issue? This is the transfer pricing loan ng U.S., which is equivalent to our Section 50 of the National Internal Revenue Code natin. So, respondent did not expend time or resources to determine member-specific adjustment for its guidance group controlled taxpayer. Hindi yun ginawa ng IRS kasi gagawin nila yun, uh, yung sabi nga, very extensive, pagka talagang may mga dispute na or uh, magre-request na talaga yung taxpayer dahil nga uh, kailangan yun uh, documented at saka collaboration also with the taxpayer. So, matagal yun. But they are allowed to make no yung aggregate na uh, adjustment. Respondent did not believe that he could independently make reliable member-specific adjustment on the basis of the information available to him. Yun. Sabi ni respondent, Yung mga records na pinakita sa amin, hindi hindi sapat para gumawa kami ng adjustment. So, yun yung reason naman ni uh, respondent o ni commissioner. No? So, respondent considered the complicity of the activities of its member of the guidance group and its relationship with the activities of other members of the guidance group and or of their foreign affiliates. Respondent also concluded that he could not independently make reliable member-specific adjustment for each of the guidance group members after considering the flow of products among guidance group entities. Grabe yung flow. Di ba? Pabalik-balik. Kung alam nyo kung water yon, makita mo talaga na dito siya galing sa isang party, punta siya dito, tapos bumalik na naman, punta naman doon sa isa, tapos balik na naman. No? Okay. So, flow ng... Uh, activities nila. So, involving multiple steps and multiple transfer pricing transactions. Kasi anong turo sa kanila ng kanilang mga tax consultant? Create or make a very complicated structure in order to save taxes. No? May naatinan akong uh, symposium or convention sa PIGPA siguro yun na ganun ang sinasabi. 
no? Parang tax planning. No? Kaso lang, na cure yan ang transfer pricing. No? Makikita yan sa transfer pricing, especially now, ano yung mga disallowance ng transfer pricing ngayon? Lack of substance. Kasi, bakit ka pagagawa ng maraming mga conduit company? No? What for? So, pwede na magdiretso na lang. So, anong ibig sabihin nun? Deceiving na yung ibang companies. Lack of substance. That's why din it is allowed na pagdating sa transfer pricing. So, for many products, the flow involved a round trip from the United States to Ireland or to Puerto Rico and back. Imagine nag-round trip yung, yung products. Yun na, for many products, no? The flow involved a round trip from the United States to Ireland to Puerto Rico and back. Babalik. Imagine that, no? Yun na yung sinasabi natin na create a very complicated structures to avoid payment of taxes. So, it's guidance group members available financial statements encompassed all activities the entity performed on all products produced and sold, including those not at issue in these cases. Respondent was unable to extract the information necessary to ascertain the income reported by its guidance group member with respect to the products and transactions at issue and determine the STI or specific taxable income of each guidance group. So, mahihirapan sila dahil hikulang yung information no? for the products and transactions at issue. Petitioners did not maintain their financial records in a manner that allowed them to readily track income and expenses by place of manufacture. And petitioners could not tie the, in the income and expenses in the business unit financial statements to particular product lines. Yan ang sinasabi ko na very important ang segmented financial statements. Ha? You can just imagine in this case, bakit in favor ang court sa IRS kasi hindi naman nagmaintain ng records na very specific ang ang ano ang guidance tapos idiban niya na gumawa ng very specific adjustment yun yung naririnig ko sa mga tax cases sa court of tax appeal na uh, yung taxpayer i-contend niya yung reason which is his own making no yung mga alibay niya na siya rin ang may gawa, yun ang i-reason out niya. So, hindi pwede. So, just like in this case, gusto niya na gumawa ng very specific adjustment yung IRS, pero yung kanyang records not available or incomplete. No? Income and expenses by place of manufacturers, no? so, hindi readily na makatrack. No? And petitioners could not tie the income and expenses in the business unit financial statements to particular product lines false generators or leads or to products manufactured in the United States, in Ireland, or in Puerto Rico. No? Kulang ang dokumento. An example of the information the responded needed to determine the income reportedly by its guidance group member with respect to the products manufactured in Ireland and in Puerto Rico was the transfer prices paid by its guidance group member. So, for the VI business, AC is purchased finished products from Guidant Ireland and Guidant Puerto Rico at a set transfer price. price. ACS then, kasi sino to si ACS? ACS yan din yung may-ari na royalty, na, uh, intangible na nila license din, dito sa manufacturer. And then, ito manufacturer, siya din ang bumibili ng product na manufacturer. No? So, umiikot lang, kaya nga, nag-round trip daw ang transactions nila. Eh. O, pabalik-balik. AC is then either resold these products to GSA or to Guide and Group Foreign Distribution Affiliates at a different transfer price or sold these products to an independent foreign distributor at a final sale price. Respondent did not have the transfer prices for any of these transactions so as to determine the profit reported by its Guide and Group O. Wala. Walang available na record on the transfer price. Member for the products at issue. While the available information enabled respondent to make what he considered a reliable calculations of CTI or consolidated taxable income for the guidance group, he did not believe the available information enabled him to make a sufficiently reliable calculation of member specific adjustment for each of the guidance group members. Kaya naman, no? So, may reason si IRS na hindi siya makagawa ng 
uh, specific adjustment. Okay, so pinadala na siya ng deficiency notice for 2001 and 2002. So the deficiency notice for 2001 and 2002 described the section 482 adjustment and as follows. It is determined that the, under IRC section 482 that an adjustment is necessary to reflect an arm's length result for intercompany transactions that Guidant Corporation and its U.S. subsidiaries entered into with Guidant Corporation's directly and indirectly owned foreign subsidiaries regarding carjack rhythm management. No? So yun yung item na um, nandyan sa deficiency notice. Vascular intervention, yung VI. Cardiac surgery, ito yung CS. In the vascular solutions, ES. Products produced in the Puerto Rico and Ireland manufacturing operations of Guidant Puerto Rico BV and Guidant Luxembourg SAL during tax years 2001 and 2002 in order to properly reflect an arm's length result for this intercompany transactions guidance corporations income for the tax years 2001 and 2002 is increased increased na dinagdagan in the amount of 446 million 100,000 ito yung time na binenta na si guidance corporation yung iba niyang subsidiaries kay BSC no and 554 thousand respectively. Hindi pala. Si 2001 and 2002 ito. 2006 binenta si ano eh. Si BEC eh. No? Binili ni BEC yung ibang subsidiaries. Ito naman yung deficiency notice for 2003. No? So, ito yung description ng adjustment. Okay. So, my deficiency notices then for 2004 through April 2006, no? So, yan yung nakalagay. So, anong sabi nila? Hindi specific, no? And then, merong deficiency notice for 2006 and 2007, no? So, kung mapapansin ninyo, ang kanyang amount sinasabi lang, pero wala siyang sinasabi na uh, ito yung uh, result, no? Kung saan siya galing. Okay. The notice did not calculate or specify what, no? So, very general. If any amount of the Section 482 adjustment was attributed to CPI, to CTS, or to GSC, or to specific types of enrolled transactions, no? So, bakit naman na uh, uh, very general, hindi, walang discussion, no? So, an, ito naman yung... Uh, Sabi dito sa discussion, the commissioner may distribute a portion or allocate gross income deductions, credits, or allowances between or among uh, controlled enterprises if he determines that such distribution, apportionment, or allocation is necessary in order to prevent evasion of taxes or clearly to reflect the income of any such enterprise. Also, yun ang section 482 equivalent to section 50 dito sa atin. No? So, yan yung ililili and company versus commissioner. Meron tayong video dyan on the ililili, no? Si R.G. Bustamante ang nag-ano dyan na report. No? Ang dami pa, no? Na mga cases or jurisprudence. Okay, so the commissioner use of his power under this provision is an exercise of discretion undertaken to place a controlled taxpayer on a tax parity. So, ano yung control taxpayer? Ilagay mo similar with that of the uncontrolled taxpayer. No? By determining the true taxable income of the controlled taxpayer. The commissioner's authority to adjust. Tingnan mo dito, Harry. Okay. Napakaraming mga cases, ha? Tingnan mo yan. Kasi mga US cases yan. Yan ang mga i-discuss natin next time. So, the commissioner's authority to adjust items under Section 482 is broad. No? Broad, napakalawak. And whether the commissioner has inappropriately allocated items under Section 482 is usually a question of fact. No? Kasi nga, ang transfer pricing is factual. Hindi siya estimate. No? So, taxpayers such as petitioners which ask the court to reject the commissioner's Section 482 allocation in favor of the taxpayer's allocation must clear Two hurdles in order to prevail. No? First, a taxpayer must establish. No? So, ito, pag ang trabaho nyo is consultancy, 
Ito yung tandaan nyo na sinabi ng uh, judge. Ha? First, the taxpayer must establish that the commissioner abused his discretion. So, ipakita mo na nag-abuse nga ang, ng discretion yung commissioner. By making allocations that are arbitrary, capricious, and unreasonable. No? Second, a taxpayer must establish that arm's length consideration for the adjusted transactions is consistent with the taxpayer's allocation. No? Natama yung allocation ng taxpayer. So, in re reviewing the reasonableness of the Commissioner Section 482 allocations, the court focuses on the reasonableness of the result and not on the details of the methodology employed. No? So, yun. Yun yung tiningnan ng court. So, sa, si petitioner, si guidant, motion for partial summary judgment addresses the first hurdle, specifically the issue of whether respondent abused his discretion. Petitioners argue for primarily that the respondent abused his discretion because he failed to determine the true specific taxable income of its controlled taxpayer that engaged in the adjusted transactions. No? So, in short, yung argument nila is based on the uh, section 482 kung um, uh, nag-abuse ba talaga yung commissioner, no? And then, nag-request yung uh, guidance on summary judgment, no? Na, uh, syempre, in favor sa kanya. Okay. So, rules applicable. Yung secondary uh, argument ni guidance, no? The, the commissioner abuses discretion because he failed to make Section 482 adjustment with respect to its transaction involving intangible. Ibig sabihin, yung issue pa rin nila na hindi raw specific yung ginawa ni, ng commissioner na uh, decision. So, kasi yung mga facts of the case, babalik-balik na lang, we have discussed, yung sasabihin ko sa inyo, yung uh, decision ng court. No? Maganda yung decision ng court. Kung bakit in favor siya sa uh, Guy, uh, sa commissioner no? uh, dito sa argument no? argument ng uh, ng guidance no? maganda yung sinabi ng court dito on the first argument niya ito na? anong sabi ng judge on the uh, petitioner's primary argument. Yung primary argument niya, yun daw nag-abuse yung commissioner, no? So, petitioner's primary argument. Petitioners argue primarily that respondent adjustment are arbitrary, capricious, and reasonable as a matter of law because respondent did not determine the true separate taxable income of its controlled taxpayer within the meaning of Section 482 Income Tax Regulations when determining Section 482 adjustment, no? So, ano sabi ng court? Our analysis of this argument starts with the reading of the statute. Ano yung reading ng statute? Yung section 482 na uh, authority of the commissioner to make uh, uh, and distribute yung income and deductions, no? So, nothing in the text of section 482 requires respondent to make member specific adjustment to, in, to reflect income clearly. Wala naman daw doon sa batas, sa section 482, na dapat ang commissioner gagawa ng specific adjustment. No? So, petitioners do not dispute that the statute does not specifically set forth a member specific adjustment requirement, but argue that such a requirement is found in the regulations interpreting the statute, specifically section 1482, 1F, 14 income tax regulations. So, ito yung sabi. <coughs> Excuse me. Consolidated returns, section 482, and the regulations there under apply to all controlled taxpayers, whether the controlled taxpayer files a separate or consolidated U.S. income tax return. If a controlled taxpayer files a separate return, its true separate taxable income will be determined. If a controlled taxpayer is a party to a consolidated return, the true tax consolidated taxable income of the affiliated group and the true separate taxable income of the controlled taxpayer must be determined consistently with the principles of a consolidated return. Uh, ano sabi ng court ha? Kasi ako, 
may sarili akong sagot, no? Kasi yung sagot mo, nandyan lang din nanggagaling sa uh, taxpayer. So, we construe the meaning of regulatory text using rules similar to the rules which we use to construe statutory text, no? We thus construe the quoted text of the regulations in accordance with its plain meaning to the extent that we can. We do not construe the text in isolation but ascertain its plain meaning through a lens that takes in the text and the intent of the regulations as a whole. We first turn to, turn to the plain meaning of Section 1482-1F14 Income Tax Regulations. The regulations distinguishes between a controlled taxpayer who files a separate return and a controlled taxpayer is a party to consolidated return. So in the former case, the regulation states that the taxpayer's STI, specific taxable income, will be determined. No? So in the latter case, the regulation lacks the same words, stating instead that the taxpayer's STI and the group's consolidated tax income must be determined consistently with the principles of a consolidated return. So the use of the words will be determined in the first instance mandates that the commissioner determine a tax sub taxpayer's specific taxable income as part and parcel of his allocation under Section 482. The absence of the same words in the second instance commands a different interpretation. To wit, in making Section 482 adjustments, the commissioner must determine CTI and STI, ito yung consolidated tax income and specific tax income, under the principles applicable to consolidated returns. The plain language of the regulations thus clearly mandates that both CTI and STI be determined, but the regulations does not specifically require that the commissioner determines STI contemporaneously with the making of a Section 482 adjustment. We thus turn to the meaning of the words consistently with the principles of a consolidated return in Section 1.482. Petitioner argues that this wording mandates that respondents should have determined the STI of the individual guidance group members at the time of making Section 482 adjustment to the group CTI. Petitioners maintain that this interpretation is in line with consolidated return regime, which requires that consolidated taxable income is computed by first taking into account the separate taxable income of its member of the group. Siyempre, saan ka ba naman babasi? Siyempre, galing din yan sa report no taxpayer. No? Uh, we construe the words consistently with the principle of consolidated return with the assistance of long-standing Supreme Court precedent and of contemporaneous legislative history revealing the intent of the consolidated return regime. Four score and three years ago, the U.S. Supreme Court started, stated in the setting of two corporations desiring to file a consolidated return that the requirement of consolidated returns was based upon the principle of levying the tax according to the true net income and invested capital of a single business enterprise even though the business is operated through more than one corporation. The Supreme Court's statement parallels a statement that the Senate Finance Committee memor memorialized in its report on and issued contemporaneously with the birth of the consolidated return regime. No? So, uh, stating the consolidated return regime was adopted with an understanding that the principle of taxing as a business unit was in reality in a business is a business unit is sound and equitable and convenient both to the taxpayer and to the government. The legislative history and the Supreme Court statement reveal that the primary principle underlying consolidated return regime is taxing of the true net income of the consolidated group as a whole. So in short, yung uh, first argument ng taxpayer, hindi pa rin sila pinanigan ng korte, no? Kasi yung sinasabi nila na uh, dapat daw specific yung adjustment na gagawin and then sabi nila abuse of authority, capricious yung ginawa ng uh, uh, internal re revenue service, hindi sila pinanigan ng court, no? Okay. okay, 
Uh, dito tayo sa second argument, no? Second argument ng petitioner. Sino yung petitioner dito? Si Guy Dan. Petitioners argue secondarily that Respondent Section 482 adjustment are arbitrary, capricious, and unreasonable because he did not make separate adjustment for its transfer of tangible property. So ano naman ang kinag-question niya dito? Yung adjustment na mismo, no? So once again, the statute is silent as to this matter, so we turn to the regulations. The applicable regulations are found in Section 482, no? So, the relevant portion of those regulations state, including for some of the years through incorporation of gross reference to Section 1, 482 IT, no? So, ito yung temporary income tax regulations. Ito yung letter B, arm's length method, no? So, in general, kasi tingnan nyo, dito sa case na to, ginamit din yung kanilang transfer pricing report, no? So, arm's length standard, in general, in determining the true taxable income of a controlled taxpayer, the standard to be applied in every case is that of a taxpayer dealing at arm's length with an uncontrolled taxpayer. A controlled transaction meets the arm's length standard if the results of the transaction are consistent with the results that would have been realized if uncontrolled taxpayers have engaged, had engaged in the same transaction under the same circumstances or the arm's length result. Arm's length method, section 1.482-2, and certain other regulations prescribed under section 482 provide specific methods to be used to evaluate whether transactions between or among members of the control group satisfy the arm's length standard and if they do not to determine the arm's length result. No? So ano yung determine mo yung arm's length result? Yun na yung gagawa ka ng adjustment. Okay. So, may mga category of method applicable to transactions. No? Na-discuss na natin yan. And then, uh, rules relating to determination of true taxable income, aggregation of transactions, product lines, and statistical techniques. No? So, ito yung mga uh, reminder ko sa inyo, yung sa segmentation ng financial uh, statement, no? financial records. Ano? Okay. So, notwithstanding the strength of the regulation, regulations, petitioners argue that the commissioner may not aggregate separate transactions involving tangibles, intangibles, or services. The court disagree. No? The regulations let the commissioner aggregate separate transactions. So, pwede mag-aggregate ang commissioner. Yun yung uh, ino-oppose ng taxpayer. No? So, in closing this issue, the judge denied petitioner's motion to extent of their secondary argument. The transfer pricing regulations permit the commissioner to aggregate interrelated transactions when doing so would produce the most reliable means of determining the arms and consideration for the controlled transactions. So, ang ibig sabihin, pwede na yung commissioner gagawa ng aggregate na adjustment. Okay. So, whether respondent abused his discretion by aggregating transactions involving intangible, tangible goods and provision of services, thus is a question of fact that should be resolved on the basis of the trial record. So, ano yun? Basis ng trial record. Lower court. Hindi na siya i-argue dito sa uh, appeal. No? So, conclusion, we deny petitioner's motion for partial summary judgment. We have considered all arguments that the parties made and to the extent not discussed above, conclude that those arguments not discussed are in irrelevant, mode or without merit. To reflect the foregoing. No? So, ano nangyari dito sa case na to? Panalo yung Internal Revenue Service. But of course, this is just sa uh, ano pa lang to? Sa tax court pa lang to. Pwede pang mag-appeal sa Supreme Court. No? Hindi mo hinanap hari yung case nito sa Supreme Court? Ah, so, hindi na siguro nag-appeal. No? Kasi pwede naman eh. Choice naman yan ng tax mayor. At saka na hindi na ito nag-appeal kasi 2016 pa. No? Okay. So, uh, ano nangyari dito sa guidance? Nagkaroon sila ng aggregate na adjustment. So, yun lang naman yung kinwestiyon nila na gusto nila ng specific adjustment. Pero ano namang contention nung I IRS? Paano kami gagawa ng specific adjustment na yung records hindi kompleto or very voluminous kasi nga complicated nga yung structures no? so kitang kita pero alam nyo since 2016 ito may mga new rules na ngayon about base erosion profit sh shifting 
na bago especially on substance no so if those cases na nangyari noon will be decided today iba yung wordings ng kanilang decision pero napakaganda no so yun na yung natutunan ko dito sa sa inaaral ko ngayon na uh, advanced program no ng uh, ano yun ano yun hari yung upset advanced program in certificate in international taxation no so napakaganda that's why i'm sharing it to you may shout out Meron lang si Joanna May. Okay. Siya, pala, siya lang mo. Oh, sige. Ma so, Mabol, so thank you very much, no? And uh, bukas, no, you are uh, invited for the free webinar on uh, transfer pricing and tax treaties, no? So, anong aralin natin bukas? Yung about the tax treaties, about the arms length principle, and about the uh, Vienna Convention on Tax Treaties, no? That Uh, kailangan i-respect no, ng isang bansa yung kanyang tax treaties. And then, uh, yung titignan natin yung uh, model convention on tax treaties, yung mga provision stone, and in relation, we will touch a little on the USRP um, tax treaty. No? And uh, pag muna papansin natin ngayon, basta may mga question on uh, taxation between different countries always consult the tax treaty wag na wag niyong uh, titingin kayo sa tax code no may tax treaty involved na po basta may ibang bansa na no so ang dami ninyo i-determine doon and uh, yun nga yung bagong regulations natin on tax treaty so with that i would like to say thank you po sa lahat nating viewers thank you very much and let's call it a night